Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Right, so we have uploaded completion guide and can guide. It's about time we start with the exploration guides and we're gonna start with 731. So as most of the recent quest formats, we have six paths, six fights per each path. And then we have three bosses, which we can fight in any order, whenever, however we want. So far, I have discussed two of the paths in my completion guide, and I'll quickly rehash them. So first of all, we have this mutant mastery, uh, which is a very straightforward path for any mutant that inflicts substantial amount of debuffs. This path is more than likely the easiest path to the boss if you have like Cable and Apoc or maybe the big Sunspot. And I'm sure there's plenty of other mutant champions. As long as you are able to inflict debuffs at semi-consistent rate, you will do very well on this lane. And not to mention that it doesn't really have any tricky opponents. I guess the hardest one is Mr. Negative, and even that's not really all that bad. And the other path that we talked about is this special delivery, Power Shield, Hurt Locker, and Matador. And here the main two nodes is Power Shield and Matador. Every time the opponent uses a special attack, you gain a bar of power. You basically just need to make sure that the uh, opponent gains a bar of power within 15 hits, which is very easy. And then, thanks to the power shield, you can pretty much use any champion, especially if they have decent special attack damage, like, I don't know, Ghost or whoever. Or you can go the other route, and you can also just go with, like, Archangel and Cable, and I'm sure they will work out fine as well. Defenders are easy on this line as well, just beware of White Magneto, so you must have non-metal counter. And I suppose Tiger and Hyperion are there as well, so if you have something with a bit of power control, that might be helpful, but even though I don't really think it's all that necessary against the uh, regular hype, because he doesn't have increased power gain or anything like that. And then let's move on to the next lanes. And uh, now we already have Paradox. So Paradox are these cross-fight mechanics. Whenever you reach nine Paradox, you gain, well, you take a ton of damage. So you typically, for all of these nodes, want to be somewhere in between three to eight Paradox charges. You want to be relatively high, like 6, 7, 5, 8 at max. You never want to get to 9. And the way these nodes work, it's very, very similar to Cavalier Quest, where you have some downside and you have some upside for specific champions. In this case, whenever you perform a well-timed block, you gain one Paradox Charge. So wherever you parry, you gain one Paradox Charge. This Quantum Immunity, the Defender's debuff immune, as long as you have less than three paradox charges. So it means first two parries opponents are going to be debuff immune, but after that, this node goes completely away. So this is kind of the downside of it. But here is the upside. The attacker gains 30% debuff duration for each paradox on the attacker. Whenever the attacker activates special, remove one paradox charge for each power bar consumed. And then we have Whittle Down, which lets them take a bit less damage and the damage reduction is reduced for each debuff they have. So for this, you just want to use champions that have access to some debuffs. That's about it. Ideally, you want to use champions with very powerful debuffs that have short durations, like, I don't know, Nick Fury, Carnage, and a whole bunch of others. And you can have quite fun time. But these Spartax Charges will also increase your parry duration, so you will be able to get in, like, you know, 10 hit combos of a single parry and stuff like that. And you can pretty much use any champions to just debuff the opponent. And that's it. Keep in mind that you will be losing Paradox Charges as you use Special Attacks and not to go over 9. But in general, it's it's fairly straightforward lane. Just make sure you don't go to 9 Paradox or you take a lot of direct damage. But most of these Paradox nodes and lanes are actually kind of cheesable. And so is this one. Because you can effectively kind of stun lock opponents with several champions like storm pyramid x or a champion like gwenpool probably who has stun chance on her basic attacks just make sure that you get to like seven eight paradox charges start hitting and if you're gonna stun she hulk in this case then she's gonna be stunned for a really long time and you're more than likely gonna be able to stun her again and so on and so forth so a lot of different cheeses are to be discovered here but you can do these lines with pretty much everyone and it's very similar here. We have Paradox Block, where you gain these Paradox Charges in pretty much exactly the same way. But you get rid of them 
in a different way. You get rid of them every time you trigger decks. So whenever you parry, you gain one. Whenever you dex, you lose one. And this time, instead of debuff duration increase, we have buff potency increase. And here we're going to have any champions that have access to frequent and potent buffs are going to be crazy good. Uh, with Cosmic Ghost right there, you're going to be able to go from basically level 3 to a level 3. Hyperion is going to be gaining power much, much quicker. Um, and his Furies are going to be much more potent. If you want to have a really fun time and if you have like relatively well ranked up Howard the Duck, bring him in here. He's going to be quite good as well. The downside node here is this Quantum Control. Where every time you hit the opponent, you're going to get one of your buffs nullified. But this is switched off if you have three or more Paradox Charges. So you have pretty much nothing to worry about. Just parry opponent three times before you start hitting them and you'll be perfectly fine. And this pumping iron node lets opponents take less damage unless you have at least three buffs active. So long as you bring in any champion that generates some buffs, you'll be just fine. Now let's go on to this run and gun. And this is another node that's fairly generic. These nodes overall are relatively open to as many champions as you can, so you can just bring in the champions that you feel most comfortable with. This run and gun is effectively just going to give you more damage now and then. Whenever you dash forward, you gain a Fury Charge. If you dash backwards, you lose all the Fury Charges. But it's fine. You just ignore this node and enjoy a bit of extra damage. Opponents have Mighty Charge 1 which does not make them go unstoppable so it's not even that hard of a node it just let them purify the debuffs basically and then there's powerful from a four and perforate that's it and uh, it's straightforward lane as well there is agent venom that can be annoying definitely without perforate so against this guy ideally you want power control or like well yeah power control like magic is actually a very very good option for a lot of these fights because you can power lock the opponent ignoring the perforate powerful from afar and you can be very aggressive enjoying extra damage like dr doom's gonna do just fine here this agent venom is actually one of the trickier fights here because yeah he has undexable level one basically and since perforate all hits of that level one will be unblockable other than that, there's Guillotine 2099. Uh, no, that's not even here. Never mind. There's no Guillotine 2099 here. And, uh, yeah, it's um, only th reason, only thing not to do in this lane is not to bring in champions that rely on debuffs too much. Because opponents will be getting rid of their debuffs one way or another, mainly through this mighty charge lane. So don't bring in your voids, don't bring in like active bleeders, stuff like that. Bring in champions that do a lot of damage without relying on debuffs. That's pretty much the only main condition here. And you being able to get past this Agent Venom with Doctor Doom or perhaps even just Sorcerer Supreme. Just hold your block up, bait everything out, uh, as in like bait the heavy attacks, push him to level 2s all the time. Um, Miles Morales will do fine here. Miles Morales actually could be a very interesting option here as well. But yeah, as long as you have a plan for the Agent Venom, the rest of the fights are going to be fairly straightforward. One second. Ah, oh, I hate my nose. And then we have the last lane, which is Muscle Wizard, Riot, and Can't Stop One Stop. The only node that really kind of matters here is Riot, because... As long as you use Mystic Champion, this Muscle Wizard cancels out the Can't Stop One Stop. And if, I, if anything, it helps you out a bit. Riot basically means that opponents will be alternating in between being permanently unblockable or permanently unstoppable. However, those are buffs and this lane is meant for Mystic Champions. And therefore, as long as you can nullify them, you're going to be perfectly fine. And that is kind of like key in the fight. Um, champions that will do well here would be your Dr. Dooms. Champions that do well here was uh black widow clairvoyant scarlet witch sigil or any mystic champion with more potent abilities nullify the trickiest part about this fight these fights are the start of it the, the defender starts the fight with an indefinite unblockable so at the very start of the fight opponents are already going to be unblockable so you will either have to find your opening by an intercept or you can use sigil scarlet witch that can parry and nullify that unblockable but as soon as you knock them down by a special attack, they're going to go unstoppable. Uh, 
and that can basically switch one or another. When you're heavy, they switch from unstoppable to unblockable, so on and so forth. And uh, you do want to knock them down in order to trigger Muscle Wizard and in order to keep fueling your Mystic Dispersion and your Nullify abilities. So, um, the trick to this lane, I guess, is nailing that initial Interceptor too and then being able to get rid of the buffs later on. But um, it's actually a fairly fun lane, uh, definitely designed for Mystic Champions, ideally. And that about sums up all the lanes. There isn't anything that's overly troublesome, I think. Um, the fights themselves didn't seem too tricky. The lanes themselves were not uh, too annoying. I think the annoying quests kind of started on 734. These are just the ones that have a ton to read, and it doesn't mean a whole lot. Like, when we look at these lanes, where you have perforate, powerful from afar, run and gun, mighty charge, it's more fluff than anything, and it's pretty much a regular fight with a mighty charge on opponent. It really is. Uh, it's unnecessarily complicated, in my opinion, for some of these quests, definitely. Right, so let's go over the bosses. So we have Taskmaster, crit me with your best shot. True Strike, Bow and Weave, Unblockable and Aggressive. So Ghost is probably the best option here, because Ghost has guaranteed crits, obviously, and all special attacks are unblockable. You can phase most of them, and you can find easy openings without relying on debuffs. So Ghost will do fantastic here as well. Um, I'm sure Kitty Pride would do as well. Um, the definitely cheesiest option how to do this fight is Ebony Maw, because Ebony... Um, Maw can't be hit if opponent's hits are uh, guaranteed to be criticals, and because of the bob and weave, all of the defender's hits are critical hits unless you intercept them. So as long as you don't intercept Taskmaster with Ebony Maw, you can cheese him down with whatever, whichever one you have. Might take a while, but it's definitely not going to be too hard. As I said, alternatively, you can definitely rely on um, Ghost to do this fight. But if you do not have Ebony Maw, if you do not have Ghost, well, then there are other decently good options that will not be as good. Uh, but mainly, you just need to be able to land a ton of crits. So champions like uh, Hitmonkey are going to do well enough. Corvus will do well enough. Or Ramped Up Aegon, should you happen to have one. Uh, that main idea that you are having to do is look for crits, because if you don't crit, you do no damage. And remember, Taskmaster is going to go debuff immune. Uh, once you inflict 10 debuffs. So do not rely on having access to debuffs. Now this Ultron, eh, it's not too bad. <laughs> we have Armored Assault. So whenever uh, he is under effect of Armor buff, he's going to be unblockable. So Miles Morales is actually a very good counter here. We have Boost buff for Armor, very good. Enhanced abilities, Mystic Ward, so you're going to have trouble uh, nullifying. You can just bring in Magneto here. If he gets an Armor up, Stands about a bit, you know, wait till it passes. But uh, he didn't seem to get too many of them to begin with. And uh, again, you have Miles. Ghost is going to be well enough. So long as you can deal with Ultron being an unblo unblockable, that's literally quite about it. There's not much to that fight other than just unblockable Ultron for the most part. And Red Goblin, the easiest of all the bosses. Um, the main key thing there is the unlimited power, which gives him a ton of buffs and can give him a ton of power as well if you nullify those buffs. Um, all aspects of that can be abused. You can use uh, Ronan, stunlock them. I've seen it done with Tigra. You can definitely use Morningstar and you're going to be perfectly fine. Most of the Mystic Champions can have a really good time here, to be honest. Uh, but it's ultimately just kind of like a Red Goblin fight. And that is about it i think i don't have much more to say about these 7.31 definitely not the hardest quest every single path is relatively straightforward and uh well best of luck let me know if you do have any questions i'll try to answer them and uh, i'll be off to doing 7.32 and 7.33 guides tomorrow see you folks Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the 